Welcome back, returning viewers and subscribers. This video is going to cover Wheel of Time, Episode 7, The Dark Along the Ways. Just talking about the ways could take an entire episode, but I'm going to cover what's happened with Matt, its impact on the story, the ways, and where we end up with the reveal of who Lan really is. When I break down part two, we, <laughs> we will cover Min, we will cover the reveal, <laughs> the reveal of who we think and hope is actually the Dragon Reborn, as well as a whole lot of other things wrong with this adaptation. They just uh, conveniently <laughs> dispense with the fact that the character of Matt is gone. How, how and why did the actor portraying Matt quit the production? We will get into spoilers for this show. If that is not your thing, hit the door. Well, not the greatest thing I have ever seen on a streaming show. The scene with the Aiel at the beginning of episode seven may be the best that Rafe Judkins can do. Yes, it looked like a kung fu movie from the early 2000s. There were continuity issues with the basketball stuffed under the Aiel costume to indicate pregnancy. The Aiel cast does not really look like the description in the book of Rand's mom. An Aiel would never use a dagger. But at this point, after everything we have been through, through six episodes, I'm just going to say those couple minutes, that's probably as good as it's ever going to get. Speaking of which, the way that they dismiss the entire storyline of what Matt becomes, his journey. This is a narrative singularity, a black hole from which the tiny particles of poop that are this story cannot escape. Too bad you couldn't keep your actors happy or whatever the circumstances were, but the fact that you have done this and then had Moy Rain simply going, you know what the darkness in him was like. All right, let's, let's just get into this. I'm going to try and calm down. Here we are in the ways with what is now the Emmons Field 4. The entire lack of chemistry on screen becomes very painfully apparent. And as long as we're breaking canon, why not have Loyal say opening the way gate would be impossible? That is not true. Of course you can open the way gate. There is a key on both sides of the doors. Loyal, being an Ogier, would of course know this. But again, this is not Robert Jordan's story. This is not the Wheel of Time. And yet again, Loyal contradicts himself by saying there can be no one use of the power in the ways. However, the show just had Moy Rain open the gate. Rafe Judkins has made it this way. If that is the case, wouldn't you think something as big as use of Moiraine's channeling actually have attracted? <sighs> Forget it. Something else from the books is in the ways. They should have had horses. They should have had supplies. They should have had lots and lots of torches. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we're going to blame Matt. The mute speaks. Suddenly Perrin discovers that he can speak English. There, he literally has said more words in this bullshit scene around Matt than he has said in the entire freaking six episodes. Where would we be without Nynaeve and this adaptation telling them, when this is all over, we'll go find him. Yeah, tell me again how this is just another turning of the wheel different from the original story. Oh my God, it just goes on and on and on. They can't, they can't stop themselves. I got to tell you, I, in my opinion, I think that whatever happened on set 
with the actor who played Matt, they wanted to be sure to shame him as a person in the real and not just as a character because Moraine just can't stop talking about how he had a darkness within him. And I'm gonna say it again, all of this is entirely wrong, not just because Matrim isn't there, but this is not how it happened in the books. The Ogier led. It was him leading them the entire time. The ways were a gift from a male Aes Sedai, and that was during the breaking. They were given to the Ogier in thanks for giving the male Aes Sedai sanctuary in their steadings. Now, of course, this was done using the one power to create pathways from steading to steading. Even during the creation, the normal rules of what we consider to be physics did not apply, and these were originally very well lit, full of grass, trees. These pathways were entirely separated from the world outside. And even during the breaking of the world, regardless of what happened on the outside, continents being sunk, the whole world essentially being scrambled, those pathways still led to the original point-to-point -point entrance and exits. When the last Aes Sedai left the Steadings, they gave something called the Talisman of Growing to the Ogier so that they could make their own new way gates. We get dialogue from Tina Turner in drag, uh, I'm sorry, from this show's version of Loyal. And of course, it does an exposition dump as to the history of the ways. It is painful to watch what they have done to Loyal. He could have been the one saving grace if they could have been buggered to even understand the height, breadth, and scope of what Loyal and Inogear are. And they continue on with the non-canon and complete misrepresentation of Moiraine. Somehow magical bullshit. Moiraine knows more than an Ogier would. It is, of course, Moiraine who explains what Machin Shin is, what it does. They just should have called this show the magical bullshit lesbification of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time story to the point where it never even vaguely resembles the story. Or is that too long of a title? And there it is, a complete ripoff of the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring movie when they are in the Mines of Moria. You remember that when they go down those staircases and it's all lit and that's exactly what we're getting here. A ripoff. It looks like somebody opened up the checkbook to actually buy some CG to make this look like something fantasy related that has some scope. They show the wind. Mashin Shin has what appears to be something you would expect from the Matrix movies. Of course, the writing team. <laughs> God, I hate this show. The writing team has Mashin Shin literally telling them all of the bullshit that the writers came up with in this hackneyed plot through six episodes. It is, of course, voices and it completely destroys the absolute terror that was shown in the books when this type of creature would attack. There was no way to survive short of getting the hell out of the ways when Machin Shin approached. <laughs> what am I watching? 90. <laughs> oh my God. Nineve. Nynaeve uh, saves them. Oh, Rafe, you do not disappoint. Y you don't. This is, I, I don't have words. Of course, it's Nynaeve. No training, no trials. <laughs> it's Rey Skywalker in the Wheel of Time. She can do anything and everything. Is it my imagination? <laughs> oh, oh, are they bonding? Is Moy Rain? <laughs> oh, God. And Nynaeve bonding to channel the one true source? Seriously? How very, <laughs> God. How very convenient. This all happened right in front 
of an exit to the way gate. I just, I'm like, <laughs> oh God. I have gone through six and a half episodes at the point where I'm reviewing this and I, I am quite literally, <laughs> Just, I, I, I don't understand what the hell is going on. I, why did they put Wheel of Time on the title card? How did anybody think this was a good idea? Every episode is a fresh new hell of wrong. I'm really starting to think they had like one of those old magician's top hats and they took little snippets from books and stuck them in a hat shook the hat up, and then whatever they drew out, they shoved into this freaking adaptation. Oh my god. So this is Faldara. What's interesting about Faldara is that it is a very large town in Shinar. It was built on what was formerly an Ogier city, which was destroyed during the Trollic Wars. The way this should look is that it is a city built into a hillside with steep roofed wooden houses and wooden towers all around it. Why, you ask? To keep the snow off during the winters. What are we looking at? Watching what Rafe Judkins did, I keep expecting the rock to jump out as the Scorpion King. Why not? Of course, it is time to murder the backstory of Lan. I'm going to skip over going what Lan's true backstory is because I don't want this video to be, you know, four hours long. And staying true to the whole intersectional storyline, they make Egelmar look stupid, not the noble, very honor bound captain of ferocious fighters that he was in the books. Because magical bullshit lesbian Moiraine, only she knows best. Okay, I'm really confused who just came out of what I'm guessing is the Waygate. Blah, 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 some made a bull bullshit intrigue involving Moiraine and the lady Malzia. <laughs> just... Uh, it's honestly become impossible to try and track this to the books. She wants Lady Amalzia to send a message to the tower to go try and find Matt. And just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, <laughs> Moiraine is sicking the red Acha on missing Matt. I can't take any more of episode seven. This is going to conclude <laughs> part one of my episode seven review. I would absolutely love comments from people about what they think, about what they've done to Matt, about what they did with the ways, about what the hell is going on with Faldara. You know, th there's a difference between being off the rails with an adaptation and just completely, uh, this thing imploded. I said it, I think, in my episode six, part two review that it seems that Rafe Judkins in that room of creatives are going out of their way to make something uh, completely subpar and inferior to the original story just to make busy work. Th this is not an adaptation of Robert Jordan's works. I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel for the thumbs up for your comments on past episodes. I would very much appreciate if you haven't subscribed uh, that you please consider doing so. I am working very hard to get to 1000 subs, which is a major milestone in the career and progress of a creator here on YouTube. As ever, this is Salty Texas Sea. I am Corey DB, slowly losing his mind, praying for the end of season one, Wheel of Time. You have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday.